Documents leaked from the so-called Islamic State group have reportedly revealed identities of 22,000 recruits. The files obtained by German intelligence are thought to contain names of 16 Britons. The documents, thought to be from a border crossing into Syria, are questionnaires of each would-be recruit and are said to have been stolen by a fighter disillusioned with the Islamic State. I-24 News defense correspondent Shai Benari and Annie Aronheim have more. The emergence of a trove of mysterious documents could possibly lead to a major breakthrough in the global fight against the Islamic State terror group. The papers have the appearance of internal Islamic State documents. In fact, they are questionnaires, featuring questions addressed to recruits to the organization, asking them to provide their names, telephone numbers, and hometowns, among other information. The documents have been obtained by a number of organizations, including German intelligence, as well as the Sky News Channel and the Syrian news website Zaman al Wasl. The source is a defector from IS, known only as Abu Hamid, who says he stole the documents from the head of Islamic State's secret police. While some reports note the documents contain the names of 22,000 IS supporters, Ayman Jawad al Tamimi, largely regarded as one of the world's leading experts on Islamic State documents, believes the number is much lower. The man that was actually bothered to go through the whole set and found that there are actually only 1,700 different names among these 22,000 files. In any case, the documents are reported to contain the names of IS supporters from at least 40 different countries, including some unknown to authorities. The spokesperson for British Prime Minister David Cameron has already expressed hope the information can be used against Islamic State, and German police have said they believe the documents are genuine, but not everybody is convinced. The seal on the document is a, uh, a circle with the Shahada on it, the Islamic Declaration of Faith. Beneath it, it says Dolus al Islam Bakhir, which means Islamic State remaining. That's a very odd symbol. I mean, I've never seen it used on an IS document that I've examined before. And, you know, I've examined hundreds of these. The source uh, is a purported IS defector based in southern Turkey. And immediately, this does raise problems because. Uh, as anyone who's been to southern Turkey would know, there's like an IS defector industry. You know, people who charge high amounts of money for even to offer interviews. And then also, uh, not, not to mention uh, selling of purported files of IS documents. Much could depend on whether these documents are indeed revealed to be authentic or not. Joining me in studio now are senior Middle East analyst Ali Wakat. Good, Good evening, man. Ali. And defense correspondent Shai Benari. Good evening, Good Shai. Evening. Um, Ali, let's maybe start with the most pressing question, which was also addressed in uh, Shai's report. To what we know right now, to the extent that we know, how credible is this information? I think the information is uh, is credible, Ayman. If we uh, if we try to see what was published in the uh, in the past and what was uh, leaked uh, uh, recently, recently we should uh, know that uh, both Americans and uh, and Syrian and uh, Russian have discovered uh, uh, documents that refer to the uh, Islamic State. And on the uh, other hand, inside the Islamic State, because they are on the uh, uh, defense, members, including leaders are uh, uh, splitting from the uh, organization, are leaving the uh, organizations, and they are taking with them uh, uh, some of these uh, documents. One of the members of the Islamic State who was in the so-called Ministry of Finance of the uh, Islamic State ran away with $7 million, uh, and the Islamic State is facing uh, these uh, problems since the last uh, uh, six, uh, six months, especially after the uh, uh, Russian, uh, Russian campaign in, in, in Syria. And we are uh, seeing that more and more information is being uh, uh, leaked to the media, but also to uh, uh, Western intelligence. And before we talk about that information with you, Shai, let's bring into our conversation now Mohammed Saleh, a journalist. He joins us from Erbil in Iraq. Good evening. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening to you, too. Well, uh, as you know, this uh, information has caused extreme media attention. People are saying this could expose the IS uh, recruiting abilities. Can you tell us first how have reactions been in Iraq to these leaks? Well, uh, this has been a quite interesting story, and there has been uh, quite a great deal of interest in it uh, in the local media here, actually. Uh, yeah, but, but you know, this is not really also surprising. Uh, if we, if by that we mean the level and the extent of organization that uh, IS or the Islamic State has, 
uh, we have seen in the past uh, that uh, this group is a very well organized group and uh, they definitely have a, a quiet, uh, well functioning uh, bureaucracy in place. Uh, it uh, it under. Yes. Thank you uh, for joining us uh, at this uh, point. Uh, Shai, can you tell us more about right. what we learn from these documents? It's a lot of documents. Mm -hmm. You've uh, prepared the report for us. What else did we learn? Right. Well, these documents, basically, most of them relate to, to basically, they belong to IS's general administration of borders, and they relate to people who have supposedly have been coming and going from the territories controlled by Islamic State. Some of the data, according to these documents, apparently 25 percent of Islamic State fighters are Saudis according to this data, with two-thirds of uh, in general IS manpower from Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, Morocco, and Egypt. This data is actually a little different uh, from previous data that was collected in the West, gives us a, a bit of a different idea, and uh, specifically the data concerning the Saudis. Now, in terms of the source of, this inform of all this information, again, the, the, the man is called Abu Hamad. He apparently shopped it around to a number of different sources. Somehow it reached the, the hands of German intelligence as well as different media organizations. He, he told Sky News, for example, that he defected from the Free Syrian Army to IS and then defected again from the Islamic State once he became disillusioned. Uh, he, he, he learned of the extent to which former officers of Saddam Hussein, he, say, he says they now control the movement, something that we've heard from other sources, of course. He, he basically says that he was disillusioned in, in, in seeing that the people who were not exactly observant Muslims control this organization, which, of course, uh, purports to be a, a very radical form of Islam. So it's interesting, I, I think, to see that. I mean, um, this, uh, this story reflects that something is happening in the uh, Islamic State. If in Raqqa, the capital of the Islamic State, uh, it's not it becoming not rare to see people who go down to the street and demonstrate. Some of them even shoot against uh, checkpoints of the Islamic State in the capital of the Islamic State. This is why the Islamic State is calling and mobilizing uh, its recruits from the rural uh, uh, areas around uh, Raqqa, around their capital, in order to uh, uh, fight to uh, stop the people who are going to the street and who are uh, protesting. And the Islamic State is now obliging every uh, youngster uh, from uh, 14 years old to go and to have a, a military or security uh, role in Raqqa and in the uh, and in the region and this showed that the movement is passing through maybe in my opinion the most challenging uh, phase it have uh, uh, been uh, through since its foundation and since we started to hear and we know that the Islamic State is now trying to move from Iraq uh, Syria towards uh, Libya and we know that uh, recently they tried to build a kind of an enclave on the borders between Tunisia and uh, uh, and Libya, which which means that at the end of the day, the Islamic State is facing an institutionalized uh, face, but also a crisis uh, face due to splits and to the uh, international uh, offensive against it. Well,